Economics assumes that people are generally rational. This means that people generally make decisions based on the costs and benefits of their decisions. That means that people will generally only do things, follow courses of actions, where the costs of doing it are less than the benefits they receive from it. A cost-benefit analysis is a structured analysis. It starts with defining a problem. Every decision is made to solve a problem. For instance, you wake up and you're hungry. It's a problem we all have to solve every morning. The next step is to define your objectives. How are you going to define what solving the problem means? There are many different ways to solve hunger in the morning. It might be to have breakfast, obviously. So once you define the objective, I need to eat breakfast, you need to consider various alternatives. There are many different things you can have for breakfast. You might think about uh, high fiber, you might think about bacon and eggs, you might think about bourbon and Cheerios. The next step then is to consider constraints. Even though a certain alternative course of action may seem like the, the best one to you at the time and may make sense in a, a logical basis, you realize that there are often moral, social, political limitations on your actions. For instance, when you realize that after your bourbon breakfast that those kids aren't going to drive themselves to school, you have to think out there's probably a better way to go about doing this. So the next step then is to, to quantify your choice of action, to try to specify the costs and benefits of that action. Uh, this may sound easier than it really is, because there are two kinds of costs and benefits, explicit and implicit. Explicit costs and benefits are those that are easily observable. In economics, these are often uh, costs and benefits that are measured with money. With money changes hands, we have a very explicit, very measurable uh, benefit and or cost. The tricky part are implicit costs and benefits. The cost of different actions may be things that there is no monetary consequence to. Very hard to measure that thing. The impression you leave with the children and the neighbors after your bourbon breakfast is kind of hard to measure in monetary terms, but it's something you need to take into account when you're explaining yourself later on. The last step in, a, in analysis is to consider opportunity costs. What were you giving up by following that course of action? If economists had a mantra, it would be, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Every decision we make carries a cost, even if it's not apparent. We call this an opportunity cost. Every decision you make means you're not taking a different course of action. And the benefits you could have gotten from that course of action, you're giving up in order to do the thing you chose to do. In Latin, decide means to cut off or to select a course of action. So by giving up a different alternative course of action, you're giving up all the benefits you could have received from making a different decision. Even if the costs are not apparent, you do pay them. For instance, suppose your, your client takes you out for uh, cocktails at lunch on his expense. It may seem like a good deal until you realize those children aren't going to drive themselves home from school. And your wife is probably going to leave you if that happens again. So all of life requires decisions and giving things up, even if the costs aren't readily apparent. Even though a cost-benefit analysis seems like a fairly straightforward process, it's actually harder than it sounds in many cases. There are various factors that make it harder to do than what it appears. One factor is uncertainty. Most of our decisions are made based on looking at the past and how things played out and assuming that once we make a decision, things will play out in the future much the same way they have before. This is not always true. Quite often, the future doesn't duplicate the past. Things don't end up turning out the same way they did in the past, even though that's what we believe to begin with. And we're sometimes uncertain about the past. We don't truly know exactly what happened in history in all cases, and so sometimes we can make wrong assumptions about how things are going to play out because we didn't really understand how they actually worked before. Another factor is discounting. Many times we're faced with decisions where we must bear a cost now that gives us the benefit later on. Or conversely, we can take a course of action where we get a benefit right away but pay for it down the road. So whenever we're faced with this kind of separation between when we pay the cost and when we enjoy the benefits, we have to have some way to discount the value of the, the cost uh, through time. 
different people have different ways of discounting those things that can lead to reaching different conclusions. For many decisions in life, we like to buy insurance, but insurance entails a moral hazard. And this simply means that oftentimes in protecting ourselves from the worst outcomes, we're actually relieving ourselves of the cost of those outcomes. And in those cases, what we've done is we've sort of removed a exorbitant cost and cause us to take actions that are maybe riskier than we would otherwise if we knew we had to bear the full cost of that decision. Transactions costs can also be difficult. Sometimes in life we're faced with too many alternatives and we have, have difficulty sorting out those different alternatives to pick the best one. So sometimes having too many choices presents a, a paradox of choice. We often think we want to have freedom of choice but we know uh, through history that people faced with too many alternatives will rely on sort of faulty ways to sort out the different ones presented to them and pick things that maybe aren't really the best course of action. Equity is another word for fairness. Whenever the benefits of doing something are accruing to different people than those actually paying the cost, we're faced with this discussion or consideration of, of whether it's fair or not. For instance, we may decide it's the best option to build a freeway on-ramp somewhere and it'll benefit everybody who travels there, quite obviously, but is it really fair to do that if the on-ramp's being paid for by people who don't actually live in that region or are ever going to enjoy the benefits of that on-ramp? Another consideration is efficiency. Quite often we make decisions based on different alternatives that are available to us at one point in time and then in the process of actually making our decision or carrying out and implementing our decision, other alternatives come about or become obvious to us and we then think like, oh, if I'd only known about that option, that's the way I would have gone back then. And lastly, we often don't consider the impact on th of the third parties. Often we make a decision where it costs us and benefits us in a certain fashion, but there are some side effects that maybe help or hurt somebody else not connected to the decision which may mean in total the decision we made was really not the most cost-effective route to go. We can reach several conclusions based on our consideration of the use of cost-benefit analysis. In the first case, we realize that everybody likes to avoid costs. The best decisions we can make are ones where we get the benefits and somebody else pays the price. But accountability matters. In a perfect world, everybody should bear the responsibility for their actions. In other words, you should pay the cost for your actions if you're going to reap the benefits. If not, you'll make decisions that are risky, uh, too costly, and inefficient. Considering the fact that people do generally use a rational cost-benefit system to make decisions, it means that people generally will respond to incentives. You can discourage behavior by raising the cost of these decisions and lowering the benefits. Or, conversely, you can encourage people to take a certain course of action by lowering the costs or raising the benefits. Life has uncertainties, though, and many people with the best of intentions and the best of analysis can still make mistakes. The bottom line is, though, people are generally predictable.